Yo, what's up? When's the start time? It's right now, bitch. Guys, I have really good news, and I want you to... I, I, I need you to relax, all right? It is very hype. After a long search, I'm happy to say that I have found the footage that I recorded for my first reaction to Lucas Graham's album. It's true. That's right. I found it. And I've been looking for that shit. So, even better news, you're going to have to wait until that video comes out before this one. Uh, it's a big dub. Rare Brad W. Yes. It is 9:30 at night and I'm reacting to an album that's an hour and 17 minutes long, which is a terrible idea. Ooh, tool. So, Lateralis was an album that I didn't really expect to get a whole lot out of. I expected that, yeah, I'd probably enjoy it. I, I've enjoyed Tool in the past. Uh, what, what do you say? Like, like I've gotten a lot of replay value out of the album. Um, I've been playing Parable and the Parabola a lot. Just that, that in and out of that shit. I mean, my God. I couldn't stop listening to that song. So, yeah, I, I think I'm pretty prepared for this, all right? I, I like that album a lot. I think it's very good. Brad, can you tell me a bedtime story, please? Sure thing. Once there was a chatter named Toki Bun who thought he was really funny and wanted attention, and he was never seen again. The end. And, uh, I'm not gonna lie, I, I don't really expect this to be, uh, a step down in any way. I've, I've heard that this album's very good. The, the names on this album are pretty strange, like Hooker with a Penis. But, you know what, I don't really give a shit, because, yeah, it's probably gonna slap. So, this is less heady than Lateralis, but it's more gross and depraved. I'm, I'm cool with that, I'm cool with that. Learn on private session. You know what? No private session. That's right. We are not turning on private session. Rare Brad W, okay? I'm just saying. I got a little bit of a bruise on my head. All this shit's gonna heal up. I just had a bad fall, so, yeah. All right, with that being said, Stink Fist, our song, 60,000 plays. Okay, here we go. Okay, now I'm ready. You know, I'm not sure what he's talking about, but uh, but it does remind me of uh, this this one video I recently watched called "Harry Potter Smokes Weed," um, which I, it might have something to do with that. What is this about? Stink Fist? Wait, is it actually about Stink Fist? Is it actually about Chocolate, Chocolate Starfish? Starfish? Something has to change. Undeniable dilemma. Boredom's not a burden. Anyone should bear. Constant overstimulation numbs me. But I would not want you any other way. Not enough. I need more. Nothing seems to... Bro, is that real? It's about drug... I know it was Harry Potter smoked weed, you sons of bitches. He's smoking that Stink Fist, okay? That dank. <laughs> I agree. I love the way that the vocals are mixed in Tool songs. Everything feels very deliberate and like it adds to the experience. That's nice. So if I had to guess, um, I'm guessing that this entire song is talking about, again, addiction, very obviously, very bluntly. Uh, speaking of blunt, it seems that this is the moment where uh, where Tool, Mr. Tool, hits that s fat spliff, okay? And you can hear him uh, slowly f fading away, but yet at the same time, you still hear the intense uh, riffs going on. Uh, as he's just kind of getting lost in it. <laughs> This song is also about anal fisting. Bro, it's about whatever you want it to be about, okay? It sounds to me like addiction. If you want to hear anal fisting, then that's on your plate. That's your uh, cross to bear. To 
The music's so frustrating, constantly feels like it's building to something melodic, payoff, payoff never happens. Bro, the song is the payoff. That's what I love about this. You don't have to wait for the payoff because the entire song is a payoff. Not only that, but there are payoffs. Like on Lateralis, the fucking drop on, oh my god, Parabola? You're telling me that's not a payoff? Nah, that's, that's complete bullshit. Um, I think this song's amazing. I think this is an amazing way to start this off. It's a strong smiley ball for me. I love the sound. I, I love the cavernous drums and everything that I, I loved about uh, the project that I did hear from them. It's here and it's done in, again, I will say like less of a cerebral way, more in a way of like, uh, you know, traditional alt metal, which I think it's doing really fucking well. Um, I believe it's about addiction. If you want to believe it's about something else, um, then talk to your therapist about that. Next song is Eulogy. Hmm. I was gonna say Eulogy to piss you guys off, but I don't want to do that. Eulogy. Isn't that what people write about when they die or before they die or something involving death? It's a poem to honor someone after death read at a funeral. I once. Hold on. I gotta. I gotta fix the camera. But when my grandpa, <clears throat> when I was at his funeral, I got. The entire audience to applaud for him at the end of the, the ceremony. It was a really nice moment. It was like, um, you ever just have like a, like a spiritual moment where just something overtakes you? It was as if there was something telling me to tell everyone to applaud for him. Tool more like poo? Yeah? Is that so? Ah, much better. There we go. Now it looks like there's a bullet wound in my head. Cool, more like Adam Levine. Why does it feel like I've heard like every one of these songs before? I, I swear, I, I know I've heard the last one, but I also swear I've heard this one too. It, it seems like this is all about like, it's a eulogy, but at the end of the day, what the fuck can even be said, you know? Because they're generic, because they all sound, <laughs> look at you guys being real smart and clever over there. Uh, have you ever listened to uh, the, the genre of drone metal? Have you? Just, just out of curiosity, have you ever listened to doom metal? Okay, the best things about those genres is when they do the exact same fucking thing as the last song or the last fucking person who did them. It's pristinely performed, beautifully produced, everything hits like a truck. The riffs are killer, they slice, everything about this is just super solidly put together. Hold on, this song is about an over-eager fan that said he'd die for Tool's frontman or something like that. It's a good one in my opinion. Someday a retarded is gonna pay $9 per minute for the listen of Sleep Dope Smoker and that day you will see what Doom is. Um, this is actually, if, you know, I, I make a mention of that because that actually is an interesting way to take on these lyrics. If this was like him supposed to make a mention of that. Uh, of that fan, it seems like he would have nothing to fucking say. Yes, he did indeed swear. Uh, twice throughout this entire nine minute song, and I gotta say the context is awesome. Really well done.
song uh, felt like it uh, lived up to its name of being a eulogy. There's three different interpretations that uh, that I found interesting. The one being about the fan, the one being about uh, the guy who created Scientology and it being a big fuck you to him, as well as it being literally about Jesus Christ. And I could see all three of them. I like that. I like that it's uh, it, it literally could be all three in one for all I fucking know. Um, I thought that was fantastic. Another strong smiley ball. Another amazing track. Um, I like the sound of it. I like the progression of it. I like the intensity of it. Uh, the lyrics were great. Um, honestly, yeah, this is uh, this is going very well so far. I'm I'm very much enjoying this project. What's what's H stand for? Who knows? We'll figure out as we listen. Next song, H. I'll be a high IQ boy. I promise. Start just like every one of these songs. What's coming through is a lie. What's holding up is a mirror. You turn my face to wine. Chocolate starfish! Totally what my damage could have. My blood before me begs me. Consider it. Sound of this album has been amazing. I want to try to dissect these lyrics a little bit, as it seems to be pretty cynical, looking at the line, like, looking to turn my piss into wine, my blood before me begs. I love, dude, I love these lines. They're just so, there's like a, there's like a strong, venomous attitude behind all of it. Like this comment, can't recall uncrit uh, Brad uncritically rocking out to something this hard. I don't, I don't know. It, it's all super cavernous. I feel like it's all leading up to something almost like a ritualistic. Boom, 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 boom. People are saying like, oh, there's no buildup. No, that is the buildup. Like it feels worth it to sit through and try to navigate and and try pulling apart what's going on. Is I feel like that's more than enough mental stimulation before like it drops into something very abrasive. Um. Yeah, I, I mean, I, again, like, yes, I'm sitting here and I'm not very critical, but I'm enjoying my time. I'm loving it. I'm having a great time sitting here and pulling this apart, and there's not a whole lot to say to add to that, so sit back and enjoy, as I don't, I definitely don't have a lot to criticize. <laughs> I like that uh, even though the sounds can be similar to their next project, Lateralis, this project to me um, feels like it's doing uh, doing a really good job at standing out on its own. I like this sort of scattershot uh, track list where everything is just very solid. Like these are all just very good tracks and I'm enjoying them front to back. It doesn't seem like they tie together uh, a whole lot, at least not yet. Um, but I'm just loving every individual piece. That one was another smiley ball. I thought the payoff was amazing. Uh, the moments where I was patient felt like uh, felt like just sort of waiting in suspense for the next large uh, unleash. I'm not fully sure what this song's about, but I could read the emotion really well from uh, Maynard singing, which is awesome. I, I feel like he does a great job with it, uh, and I'm overall very uh, very happy with this. So let's let's continue. Next song, useful idiot. This is just a joke track to make people think the vinyl is broken. 46 and 2, next song. Sounds somewhat familiar, but I, oh, I fucking love this riff.
very satisfying. Oh God. God. Forty-six and two refers to gaining chromosomes, and the shadow refers to the ID, ego, and super ego stuff. In other words, uh, to to understand Tool, you must have a very high IQ. No, but actually though, that that is pretty cool. Not gonna lie. Song is a 46 out of 2. I think that uh, I think this is my favorite song of the album. I'm feeling. It's pretty good. Oh, wow! That 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 song consistently, like it, it continued to surprise me until the very end, in which it still surprised me, and it sounded amazing. I mean, every part of that song sounds amazing. The progression's amazing. I, I really like the lyrics of this one. I mean, this this. Uh, might go toe-to-toe -to -toe with, like, my favorite off of uh, Lateralis, which is Parabola. Walter, get your cock out, Walter. Yeah, exactly. It's pretty good. Pretty good song. Not gonna lie, it's, it's pretty good. Message to Harry Manback. Walter, put your time signatures away, Walter. I'm not writing a song based on the Fettuccine sequence, Walter. Mike, Mike, we have to make a song using the Fettuccine sequence. But please, please! Shut up! You know, it's easy to criticize this song, but this is actually a very accurate depiction of how all people in Italy talk. Um, no, but actually, the, I'd, I'd probably skip that every time. I don't. I don't know. And hey, forget about it! The song's called Hooker with a Penis. Which, you know pretty taboo back in the day. Nowadays, I, I gotta say, this name doesn't really shock me as much. Transphobic Kings. See, I complained about ticks and leeches off of um, Lateralis, but I believe on an album like this, they could definitely get away with this. As uh, because this album has already, first of all, had moments of trolling, like with fucking useful idiot and message to Harry Manback. Like I feel like I listened to this with more of like um, 
and understanding that there is like some humor to a lot of this crap. So I'm like, you know what I mean? It's it's not all trying to tie together into something. actually love that song i thought that was amazing um hooker with a penis is a song that's uh, mis i'm quoting mr Beaverture says it's a song about him selling out uh selling himself being a hooker but it has nothing to do with him being transgender i got what he's saying he's saying like i'm a hooker you know for the because i'm i'm giving out these songs i've sold out but you're fucking buying them you fucking complaining twat and there's a lot of frustration here but i feel like it's aimed amazingly i think this song is incredible it's one of the darkest sounding songs of this album and i feel like it does the subject matter like a good service like i'm i'm really impressed with this song like the sound is awesome the attitude is great it's very funny like it's got a good sense of humor to it um yeah i think this is this is amazing so one of my favorites smelly ball you can see the your favorite martian inspiration on this track uh, <clears throat> yeah, 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 sure, sure, uh, sure. Next song's Intermission. Hey, hey, hey. No, I know I'm not supposed to, you know, I'm supposed to let the two play together, Um, but this instrument's actually called a Calliope Mori. It's the Calliope sequence. Next song, Jimmy. I see. This is, I feel like this album is just continuing, continuing to descend. Like the tone is just getting darker. Uh, Jimmy is, I, I would not say it's my favorite song on here in terms of just like, I, it's kind of easy to fall out of it a little bit, um, but it also has some of my favorite moments. So it still sort of stands out on this album. Um, a really solid track regardless. Slippin' Jimmy. Die Eeyore Von Satan. Yo, hold on. I know exactly what this is, okay? You guys ever hear this song? It sounds exactly like this. Okay, and people might be getting PTSD from that little clip, so, um... <laughs> What's the problem? Chocolate <laughs> What's the issue, huh? Why are they cheering? Oh wait, the, it actually does translate to a cookie recipe, is that so? So it's supposed to be about how menacing the instrumental is, but the lyrics are a cookie recipe? Sure. The gimmick, I, I'd skip it every time. 
It doesn't really that much affect my overall listen as I find these interludes to still be entertaining and creative. So yeah, next song is called Push It, uh, which I, I imagine predates their song that they would eventually release called Shove It off their, uh, off their album, uh, what is it called? Beyond the Fur or something? Poo Shit. Poo Shit. Chocolate Starfish! Shit on me. I want to make a mention that uh, that we are actually almost done with this album, or not necessarily. There's some very long songs at the very end, but um, yeah, we've gotten through the majority of this album, and I'm still engaged, like very much so. I, I'm actually very impressed at the sequencing of this project, and every song has just been super solid. So yeah. I can't look past the fact that it sounds like he says put shit on me. It's on purpose, mud boy. Push It I feel like is not the most consistent song on here, though it does feel like it comes together by the very end. Um, there are moments where I do feel like it just sort of meanders, and I would say it does feel like it's stretched a bit long for not really fully feeling like it delivers uh, through the entirety of it. I like the song. I think it's really good. It's a smiley ball for me, and I think the payoff and the parts that are really great are like pretty much what I remember from this, as well as I'm able to kind of sit through the whole thing and enjoy the experience, but I just don't feel like I got... Uh, the greater picture out of this one like I have with many of the other tracks. So, good song. To Cero, some, uh, some, uh, some, some ability? Oh my god. Jack, play that back. I don't mind the interludes. I, I think they actually continue the uh, dark, unsettling atmosphere of this album, and even here where it's just so strange. It's like, it's quick, it gives a specific feeling, I feel like it provokes you. Um, I genuinely don't, like even though I don't love the interludes, and I would be able to listen to this without them, uh, I just feel like the fact that they do jolt you in such a way is, I, I feel like appropriate. You're trolling, this shit ain't quick. Next we have the, um, we have the title track, uh, Anima. Learn to swim.
you'd rather listen to Limp Bizkit by... Drop and stop it! People often say that a lot of Tool's music sounds the, the exact same, but that is mostly because, uh, see, like, they, they are all usually in D major. You got this song, uh, D major, D major, uh, C major. Uh, you got another one uh, from Tool that's D major, uh, C major, A, uh, C major, C major, D major. Okay, that's also by Tool. Um, you got C major, okay. You got A minor, B minor, D minor, A major, okay. I got another one from Tool here, the C major. Okay, so uh, so that's 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 why. All right, that's a Quavo song. No, it's a Tool song. It showed up when I looked up Tool. Okay, it's a Tool song. All right, come on. Do I have to explain? You guys are like children. All right. Hey, Brad, love your videos. Uh, oh yeah, Mars. I'll get to Mars Volta eventually. Okay, well there you go. He says fuck L. Ron Hobbert right there. Okay. Wow. You know, I can't give that a smiley ball because of all the swearing. Uh, so unfortunately, I'm going to have to take your soul for sinning. Sorry, Tool. You know the rules. <laughs> My poor Christian ears cannot handle that song. Which is why it's a 10. I'm feeling... A 10. Not not only not only is that possibly the best song on the album, but the actual sequencing of this coming at the very end feels like it's a payoff for the entire album as well. This is one of the darkest songs. This is a song that's one of the most brutal and relentless. I think this is fucking incredible. Like I just I that's that's really all I could wrap it up to is that this song is it's so dark, it's so twisted, it's so angry. And it just lets it out in the most, like, satisfying and fucked up way. Ions. Four minute interlude? Yeah? You guys are having a debate whether or not we skip this one, huh? Do not skip, skip, do not skip. <sighs> when do they stop tuning their instruments and play the music? You're supposed to synchronize your dick chakras to this track. Number one fastest growing energy drink in the game. Amazon, the number one deal of the day on Amazon right now. 24 hours, the deal of the day. All flavors of Zoa, all Zoas. Our forecast for Zoa Energy will be a one billion. Islands is actually my favorite interlude on this uh, on this entire album. It, as strange as that seems, I actually find the sounds to be very satisfying as well as the. Uh, moving around of the electronic signal to be very therapeutic as like I, I know that like like that actually does something mentally there's like research behind that crap but you know uh, that's just me with my high IQ all right I actually liked it I, I thought that the ambience was satisfying and even though it was four minutes it didn't feel like it so yeah smiley ball I, I think it does a good job at sort of darkening and dampening this album for whatever this final track is which is about 14 minutes long so, um, yeah, I think it does a good job of setting it up. So, all right. 
third eye. The fuck? Lyrics aren't synced up for a 15 minute song, really? I think drugs have done some good things for us. I really do. And if you don't believe drugs have done good things for us, do me a favor. Go home. Oh my god, it's Jordan Peterson. This, this chicanery, he's done worse. That's that's a bruise. That's not my third eye. It's that that was there before the song started, okay? I'm evolving. Nipple just opened. My starfish. Chocolate starfish! Yeah, I think that's um I, I think that that's about as perfect as I could ask for a closer like this. I'm feeling I think that it's like, you know, it's a meme to call something like this genius, you know? But I, I think that this album is genius. I, I think that this ending is amazing. It it feels real and genuine. It's dark, it's not pretty, fucked up. But I feel like it gets the message across as well as it possibly could, while also making incredible music. The shouts of prying open my third eye are unsettling. They feel unhealthy. Um, it's it's uncomfortable, but it, it feels like it just perfectly fits to end off this album. Um, I found... So, I, I mean, I've recently listened to a lot of albums that I've been absolutely loving. Master of Puppets by Metallica and Marky Moon by Television are like two of the most recent. And I just feel like the fact that by the end of this experience, and I do say that this album is an experience, um, I do feel like this is matching up to those two. 
by giving me something that is so powerful and yet feels so complete that even the moments here, the, the interludes, the sarcastic crap, uh, adds to it and, and sort of expands on the experience, making it feel like it's even more, um, like, like, like it hits on even more neurons in a way. I, I thought that this album was incredible, and possibly I might have even liked it more than Lateralis, which is not something I fucking expected, because I, I really did enjoy that album, but I really don't dislike any songs on this project. Sure, the interludes you can poke and pick at and whatnot, but I I don't mind I don't mind them like they're fine. Um, but I genuinely loved every song on this album. Uh, I'm feeling a nine plus on this project. Yeah, one of the best experiences I've had. Uh, I can't even say it in a while because I've been listening to some great music, but it's it's up there, dude. I think it's I think it's absolutely spectacular. So, yeah, loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it. Uh, will be revisiting. Um, the experience will stick with me. And I got to say, this is an hour and 17 minutes that just flew by. I mean, it is so tight. It is so well orchestrated. My God, this is awesome. All right, fucking amazing album. Loved it. Uh, the, uh, yeah, with that being said, thank you everyone for being here. And I'll see you later. You like the new chocolate starfish meme? Uh, all right, peace.